Instead of looking at the blueprint to success, we're looking at the fingerprints, evidence to a crime committed in 2023 to 2024. What's up? It's your boy Centron coming back at you with another analysis video. And I kid you not, that's my real name. We're going to pick up with a series here. Um, probably going to be a five-part series for me. Eagles blueprint for a Super Bowl return next season. So how can this happen? We were just there um, facing these Chiefs at the pinnacle of the sport and now we see ourselves sitting at home not just that it was a debacle a collapse a catastrophe of a season um in the later stretches and that really stretched out from the beginning us never finding the identity um settling in yeah so many things need to uh be corrected and we'll dive into uh those said things first up here reinventing the offense so what can we do to fix um, the unit that was supposed to be the driving force behind our team in 2024. Well, first of all, you look at um, top down. I mean, they've gotten rid of um, Nick as the uh, leading piece there because let's be honest, before Shane Sykin took over in 2021, things weren't going well in, from our supposed offensive hire which is, you know, very strange and, and uh, deeply troubling. But they righted the ship with him as offensive coordinator, but he left in 2023 to pursue a head coaching job. And the wheels fell off again because we inserted Brian Johnson, but what I don't understand is why we didn't use his ideas. Look at his offenses at Utah, um, especially Florida, the two years that he directed that offense. The, none of the ideas that he um, implemented there or borrowed or what have you were put into motion here, which is very strange. You're gonna install a guy, but not use his ideas and then yet decry that we have no fresh ideas for this offense. It, it's very it's very frustrating and, and kind of counterintuitive to what you're saying. So basically what you're saying is Brian Johnson had nothing useful to offer or nothing that you were willing to use that he offered and that that's that that doesn't um mesh with the off-season results he got a multitude of interviews and yeah you can say some of those were like oh well you just bring him in because he's the d diversity um prospective hire but not all of those were that so that tells you that the league sees him as a bright young individual but yet you weren't able to put those ideas into play like that that just screams to me that you, you know you're lying to me on some front in some way shape or fashion to a minute degree you you're not telling me the truth i don't know if we'll ever get to the bottom of that but it is what it is but these i you know the offense grew stale and tired on it in, under sirianni and brian johnson because we just kept retreading the same process thought pattern We'll, we'll uh, go with the screen here. Um, we'll we'll go with this this idea that's totally expected a QB draw, um, or like you know um, a QB counter. Hey, the fact that you couldn't write the shit because it was happening since the inception of the season. It speaks to your lack of direction and lack of control over this whole thing to let it spin out of control like it did so um we're obviously bringing in kellen moore the former cowboys and uh last season Chargers offensive coordinator he's gonna do a, very, a mix of things that are diametrically opposed to what we didn't do we were the uh team in last place 32 rank um team that run, ran the least amount of motion yeah, he's going to, he's going to uh, put into place pre-snap motion as well as schematic changes uh, for Jalen Hurts, A.J. Brown, Devonta Smith, Dallas Goddard, and the rest of the guys to find open spaces in the opposing defense. So he schemes his guys open, uh, makes it easy um, for them to break away from the coverage and allows them to dictate. Because I didn't see us really dictating to defenses last year. I saw us playing to their hands, just going out there with the mentality, okay, we're just gonna beat you on talent alone. 
we're gonna run, we're gonna run, regardless of what you run, which is just an ignorant way of bumping your head against the freaking wall. Like, high school, I get it. College, maybe? Because talent, you know, um, it's a bigger uh, gap between talent, between programs. But in the NFL, these are the best of the best of the best. So the discrepancy there is negligent when it comes to just trying to physically impose yourself on people. And you have to meld some kind of scheme into that. You just play straight up, you're gonna get beat. So, I mean, it was insane uh, the way we were going out there and playing um, and relying on those guys to, to do everything within their power without the backing of an actual design towards breaking down the defense. So like AJ Brown, he was winning um, based on his ability to separate, not because they, they created separation. Devonta Smith was winning on the level of crispness with which he ran his routes and not on them creating a specific design play um, seven times out of 10. Because there were some there were some concepts we did implement and then we went away from, strangely enough. Um, Dallas Goddard. It was just the one concept that did work for us that we were using at Dawson. So, I mean, it... We shouldn't be leaving it up to them. And I know that's frustrating for them. Um, but, you know, creating the open space so now A.J. Brown can use his skill set but also rely on the play callers to uh, put him in a position to succeed. Same with Devonta, his uh, um, using a space, getting back to some, something similar that they did to you know did for him in college. He was wide open. There was a reason he had eighteen hundred yards and hundred plus receptions. We want to see that Devonta, Dallas Goddard, him being you know a blocking and passing threat. He should be killing, you know, teams with 100-yard games, working and doing all the work over the middle. The fact that you couldn't take advantage of these three guys when they were all on the field at the same time was just such a travesty. Um, but there's no running lanes for Hurts. Um, yeah, it, it, I mean, that, 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 I would say, you know, Jalen's compromise, okay. But we didn't want to throw the ball over the, over the middle of the field. When he was one of the best, even though he was like the third highest rate of doing it, but he was in like the top five. Um, and then we look at the numbers and guys who threw over the middle. And these, I mean, you no, know, damn it, Goddard, you know, just, you know, not just disappearing from the offense not having a way to use him and being incompetent against the blitz when there are things you could do hot routes um it could be a side adjustment um shortening the routes crossers hey, confounding so that would come to an end i'm just it's even for just that alone happy um, but the players, obviously, they gave up on the, on the coaching staff because there's only so much you can do when you're giving 100% and someone else is not. you got to mentally check out at some point. So even just, not even just, subconsciously. You're going to. But... Um, the front office was definitely looking into bringing more talent defense aside. That's a whole other thing. But there's no way Kellen Moore is not able to turn around this offense with the tools that we have in place already. Top five O-line got that. You know, a top five duo rec uh, receivers got that. Running back, I mean, we need to get some ideal guy. But if you ran it back with Swift, and, and find some ancillary pieces, we'd be fine with that. Tight end who's, you know, top 10, maybe slip because of you guys, but should be top five. Any offensive coordinator worth his salt would kill for that. 
So we'll see. Um, but hey, we'll get into the next part. You know, be interesting. I have an interesting response to this um, question, narrative, you should say. All right, um, the report is out that Eagles hire new inside linebackers coach from the Texans. So we have hired um, Bobby King in a similar role um, to his last job with the Tennessee Titans. And, you know, he worked with, uh, coached up um, Zach Cunningham when he was there with the Texans. But you look at his time in the league, um, quality control, such linebacker, assistant linebackers coach, defensive assistant, assistant linebackers coach, assistant linebackers coach, linebackers coach, line, inside linebackers coach, defensive line coach, but last inside linebackers coach. So uh, he overlapped with Nick Sirianni. I'm like, uh, you know, I would rather, I would really rather had one of these guys. But my thing is with them, I think that they wanted to have um, different responsibilities. So Joe Barry joined with um, the the Miami Dolphins. So he's uh, he's their new inside linebackers. I mean linebackers coach slash run game coordinator. I think Mike Caldwell has the same um, set of roles. He also uh, he will coach the linebackers, but he also has run game responsibilities. And I don't think they were willing to relinquish that. So that's maybe the reason why they didn't sign on here. With a guy like Vic Vangio, he's maybe going to do um, his own thing. I don't think this guy King will be uh, adding those responsibilities to his plate. And that could have been a difference maker, but I would have preferred to have one of these guys, um, you know, top-notch guys. These guys being former defensive coordinators so they can see it from an entirely different perspective. Um, not, that's not to say that Bobby can't come in and do a good job. I think, you know, he's a fiery guy. Um, this has got to play for him. But we'll see um, how that develops. But, uh, you know, I just would have wanted the all-star aesthetic cast. But, you know, we got what we got. Anyways, we'll end the video here. Shorter video for me. But, anyways, you're not even watching, though. But it's all good because I love talking about the Eagles. And I love making these videos. So, we'll chunk the deuces. But, as always, as always, it's Fly Eagles Fly. And let's motherfucking go. Fly. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Check me out at Cintron, Cintron Anime, Cintron Life, or Cintron Laughs, or other social media.